Good afternoon. My name is Steve Whittem of Whittem Associates. Thank you once again for attending our session this afternoon. Uh, this is the third in our four session presentation, utilizing tools to assist woodworkers to get the most out of the technology that is available to them today. Specifically, we are going to be using Autodesk Inventor and Woodworking for Inventor, not only in the design side, but also in the manufacturing side. Uh, that is why today's session on bills of material and cut listing is so important. In our travels, we have seen many, many companies, and we have found that that aspect of manufacturing is taking much, much too long to be able to generate the information for the rest of the company to use. In the past, that particular job was always delegated to um, individuals who might not even have been in engineering. Um, so they get past drawings from the engineering department. The engineering department does as much as they possibly can by putting documentation on their drawings. Maybe they're filling out forms themselves, but a very, very manual process. And the creation of a bill of material could take as long as the design sometimes. Well, obviously that is not acceptable. Um, in today's world, we need to be able to effectively um, create content, digital content, as quickly as possible. So who uses bills of material? Well, you know, some people just say engineering and estimating. No, there are many, many more people. You have the MR, people in the front office handling MRP and ERPs, sales staff, supply chain, estimating, quality control, shop floor, inventory control, engineering, people that are thinking about future projects and the best ROI on future projects, and of course, marketing. So for all intents and purposes, it's the entire team. And if we don't get it right, then the entire team doesn't get it right, and it's prone then to have us to have problems and errors um, that could be incredibly costly. So these are the types of considerations that we took when we said, okay, third session, what do we want to do? Well, let's talk about the usage of the technology that's available today to get the most out of it. So my hope today is to show you some of the content that can be created, how quick it can be created, and then hopefully you could see this could be a possible fit for your company. This is a piece of furniture I put together for our presentation this afternoon. Freestanding uh, cabinet unit, display unit, sideboard unit, whatever. Um, construction, whatever joinery, knockdown fittings you would like to use. It really doesn't matter whether this is the most complex or the simplest um, item that we are designing. It Again, it doesn't matter. I just picked this because there's so many varied things in here that I'm going to have to at least consider in our cut list or a bill of material. That, that's why I'm presenting this. But please, uh, it doesn't matter what you build. It can be used, um, bills of material and cut lists are used everywhere. Now, the one thing that you'll notice is that when I build, I also build somewhat modular. So over here in the browser, you'll see there's a caucus. That's the cabinet. The unit itself is the caucus. That means without the doors, without the drawers, without the hardware. And then we have door left and door right. And we also have three drawers. Um, you'll notice also that, of course, all of the constraints are already on it. The thing can move so that it could be displayed in hundreds of different uh, presentations. Uh, hardware is already on it. It's already mortised out. Uh, the drawers themselves, I got a little fancy this time, and I did some dovetail drawers. Again, whether they're parametric or whether they're static, it doesn't make a difference to us at this moment for bill of material. Because if we, because if you change it, change the size, of course, the bill of material cut list will automatically change with us. So that's uh, again really very very. Uh, quality type uh, uh, approach to building. So I always I always say build for change because we know it's going to change. 
Uh, you can see the doors themselves have a stop molding on the back to hold the glass in. That's glass, but it's everything's gray because that's the way that Autodesk um, presents to you until you start coloring it. Um, this particular unit here um, took me oh, about an hour and a half to put together, uh, so really not, not too difficult. And our bill of material, I really would like our bill of material to be able to be generated in under five to ten minutes. So again, that's what I'm hoping for. So what do we really need in a cut list or bill of material? Well, we need the ability to see things as subsystems, like the door and the parts that are within the door, the caucus and the parts that are in the caucus, the drawer and the parts that are in the drawer. We need to know each of the parts, meaning we need to know the names of the parts, the length, the width, the thickness of each part. We need to know that. We need to know what material's made out of. We need to know what the core material is. Let's say it's MDF with a veneer covering. We need to know one side's a backer, one side's a uh, laminate. We need to see edge banding. We need to see things like uh, if it's mica, we, maybe we need two sizes, uh, an, a finished size and a cut size. Sometimes you, you basically trim it up to be laid into a cold press and that size has to be a little larger so it can be trimmed afterwards. So there's many, many things. Also, we might need to know what's gonna go to a panel saw and what's gonna go to a router, what's gonna go to a table saw. So we have to be able to segregate per um, downstream usage. Um, so all these things are important. Um, and again, that's why we are presenting today because they're fairly simple to to really pull from an inventor model. So let's go further with this. When we want to get started with uh, cut listing and bill of material, the most important thing is to, to have a model that is somewhat configured in a way that'll make sense to other people within the company, other groups within the company, shop floor, people that have to look at the cut list, front office, with MRP and ERP system where there's a numbering scheme that they might you might have to adhere to. We know there's going to be change and we know that materials that we pick today starting out might change by the time we are in process already. The, the design's there, but we know materials can change. A mica could change from one color to another. They, all kinds of things can happen. In this particular scenario that you're looking at, we also have segregated the way we build. So you could see here there are subsystems. The doors are separate sub-assemblies from the caucus. So you can see the caucus is one sub-assembly. The door left, door right is, is assembly two and three, or sub-assembly two and three. And the drawers are, of course, sub-assemblies also went crazy with dovetails on those, but they're, they're okay. Uh, also, hardware. You could see here there's an area for hardware, and all the hardware is going to be purchase parts. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to organize it because if we wanted to show in a cut list or a bill of material that we have door left and door right, we also want the ability to say door left has these parts in it. And each of those parts have a length, width, and thickness to it. And each of those might have edge banding on them. Or they might have a veneer on the outside and a backer on the inside. So all those things can be considered easily when we start building. As an inventor user, you've already started your bill of material by naming your actual parts, and then, of course, naming the assemblies or sub-assemblies that the parts are members of. Hardware also. If you're using hardware or library items, for example, these pulls. I'll open up one of the pulls. If you go into Tools, Document Settings, Bill of Material, you want to tell it it's a purchase part. If you tell it it's a purchase part, then it will segregate those into a particular area and note it in your cut list and your bill of material. If not, 
it'll think that you build them rather than buy them. So those are simple things that you always do. And they're in a library, so they're read-only. To get started, we now have to start thinking about adding material. Now, what kind of materials do we add? Well, we need to add core materials, like well, the door is made out of hardwood. Um, the, the carcass might be made out of MDF with a backer on it and mica or veneer on one side. Edge banding, possibility. Glass, sure. Molding strips. Um, you name it. So many different possibilities here. So what I do, what I'd like to do is show you at least start out fairly simple and then we will extend this quite a bit. So let's say that I started out and I said I want to create a brand new part. And on this part I'm going to create a simple rectangle and the rectangle will be 20 inches by let's say 15 inches. And I'll also extrude this so it's 0.875. So. so what I have here is a fairly simple part. I'll pick save. Give it a name. And you can see it's called sample part 101. One of the key ingredients to making this happen quickly and easily, I mean we're talking about minutes, not hours is to, for you to consider the possibility of using woodwork design, woodworking for inventor. And at the beginning of our session, there was a, a place to download it for free for 45 days. If you aren't a user of the product, please take advantage of that, that 45 days to evaluate whether this is going to be meaningful for you. Under woodwork design, we can do a bill of material. Now, when you do a bill of material, it'll tell you, I can't give you that information because you haven't applied a material to it yet. So we then go into our material tool and pick a sign. And you could see here, there it's categorized. Solids, hardwoods, softwoods, boards, items that come out of panels, a four by eights, five bys. A board, a laminated board is a core with coverings on it. So you, a laminated board could be an MDF core with laminate on two sides or laminate on one side and veneer on the other side. Uh, rods are molding, veneers, wood, plastic, edge banding, same thing, paint and lacquers. All of these things exist. Now these categories of course can be added to. I simplified it a little bit and I said this is going to be cherry. I pick it and hit apply. It's now cherry. Direction of the grain is always going to be based on the long side. The long side. But of course, we have the ability to change grain direction. If I now went to bill of material, it automatically told me it's made out of cherry. This is board inches. I mean, this could be converted to board feet because it's solid. Solid material. And this is the size. All automatic. So what this allows me to do is easily pull information without worrying about all types of parameters that I have to deal with. At the same time, that allows me to open up AutoCAD models, Inventor models, SolidWorks, SolidEdge, CATIA models, and immediately do this and start getting a bill of material. So that is how easily that's done. Now, if I go ahead and change this, okay, so let's say that um, I go ahead and I touch this outside edge and do a simple fillet, okay? And pick okay. It'll still be the same size because it's gonna square this off. It's gonna square this off. So it'll understand, even though that there's a radius there, that it has been changed. If we go ahead and sketch on the top of this, okay and change it okay let's change it to this value here pick okay and then do a bill of material automatically this is populating it for me applying material to individual parts or into the subassembly 
is a straight task of picking a sign, select the material that you want, and then touch, touch, touch. All I'm doing is walking around this. So this can be done, as I said before, um, at the end of the job, during the job, in the middle of the job, or wherever you would like. Okay, and then secondly, let's make, um, make sure they're glass inserts. So this is glass and that's glass, and pick apply. I can see through it. And I have some stop mold on the back of this also. So what I'll do here is say assign and use some molding. Let's use corded oak molding. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and apply. And that's done. So right now, this particular unit is made up of door left, door right, no edge banding, just solid material and some glass. If I went to a bill of material now, let's see what happens. First of all, it now lists all the parts, purchase parts, that are that is, and in mission door left and mission door right, it's listing every single part, length, width, and thickness of every single part, and as you go further, glass, this is how many square inches of glass on each part. You go further, you could see this quartered oak. So from nothing to the start of a bill of material, you could see that it's very, very effective. To add the rest of the materials would take only a couple more minutes. Um, the easiest approach would be to grab the caucus, open it into its own file, go to assign, and this time I'm going to do, I'm going to assign it as a laminated board. A laminated board means the core material is different than the covering, than the veneer. So core, maybe MDF, plywood, bir Baltic birch something, sound deadening material, multi-layers, what have you. And we're going to put a covering of oak quartered. If I don't select anything and just pick apply, then it assumes that everything would be that material. So it's going through the steps right now. Once this is done, you'll see that the covering is different than the core. Because, again, that's what the purpose of us using a laminated board. So you can see here that the covering is the corded oak on both sides. doesn't have to be. And it's an MDF core. If we now want to edge band it, we can say edge banding. When you edge band something, you, again, this list can be extended to in, almost infinite. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. I'm going to pick corded oak, and it, here it'll indicate to you what thickness is. And again, these are all customizable. And when I add this, it's going to sink into the actual unit itself, so it's going to maintain the overall width. So if I say this edge, this, this, this. All of those have edge banding on it. So you can see how that's blended perfectly and the verticals I haven't done. If I wanted to do a shelf, all four sides, I can say I want all faces and I'll touch shelf A, B, C, D, and E and pick apply and that's done if I want to change the grain I can say grain okay. it's asking me to 
align, let's, let's take that and align it to this front edge and pick apply. So again, fairly simply what we just did was we added all this edge banding. If we wanted to go further, we can say, again, assign, and if we're going to do the same edge banding, we can do something called tangent faces, okay? So if I touch that face and this face, it's done the top and the front, but it didn't do the back. So if I flip it around the back, you could see that the back is still open, okay? So again, functionality is there for us. Returning back to the uh, top level assembly, you could see that now the door and the caucus has been changed. Uh, the only thing left, of course, is the drawers. So I'll just say assign, I'll use solid. I'll say these are cherry just so that they look different. Domestic cherry, one, two, three, four, and five, apply. And those are taken care of. Because it's the same drawer, uh, the instance of the same drawer, they all work together and I'll pick save. At this point, um, we have now configured this unit. The scalability of using Woodworking for Inventor Bill of Material on any kind of design becomes quite interesting because the amount of data that we can pull out of an inventor model easily without being a programmer is dramatic. What you've just seen is just the first level. Let's go in and look at the bill of material now that all the parts have been assigned their information. Doing this you'll see the top level level assembly called the mission cabinet and all of the sub assemblies underneath them. Underneath the sub-assemblies are the names of the parts in each of these. And if it's parametric and the model changes, of course this changes. If we take a look further at the caucus top panel, for example, you would see that the top panel is made out of laminate high-density flake board with a corded oak covering. It also tells you how many square inches, but I could actually show it in square feet if I wanted to. And it also shows that one edge of it has edge banding on it. If we take a look at the middle shelf where we put four edges of edge banding on it, you could see that here is the high density flake board with the quartered oak covering and one, two, three, four pieces of edge banding and the edge banding is, give, is telling you that there are two sides that are 20 and, a half, 20 and a half and two sides are 16 and three quarters. It's also saying on a one inch board use the width of one and a quarter, one and an eighth edge banding and the edge banding thickness is. All of this is all automatic. When it comes further to presentation, it's also showing you all of the purchase parts that are available. But again, this is the down and dirty, quick bill of material. What I'm about to show you is what the rest of the office can then take care of, take advantage of. At this moment, I want the entire cut list, bill of material, everything about this job sent out to the shop floor, to purchasing, to the front office, or directly to MRP or ERP systems. Um, that is the culmination of everything I just did. So to present it in steps, I'm going to just open up the left door to begin with, okay? And the reason I'm doing this is because this door is made up of five parts. No, nine parts. Two styles, two rails, four. Glass is five. And four pieces of uh, glass stop. That's nine, okay, rather than 88. And then I'll do 88. If I went to a bill of material now, the, the first level bill of material gives us this information immediately. It gives us the information in regard to the fact that the door is made out of solid material. It's quartered oak, how many what board inches or board feet, 
and of course the sizes. Uh, the mold for the stop is red oak. Okay, molding red oak quarter slice molding. How many how many inches of it? Okay, we could have a waste factor built into it if we want. So all of this is automatic. And of course, if the model changes, this changes. What I'll now do is I'll go out to Excel. And what Excel is, is the vehicle for transfer, either to generate reports or for sending it someplace else. Uh, for example, panel sores, to go into routers, all types of avenues in the, in the office environment and the shop floor environment, we can start uh, populating with correct information. It's asking me, what do I want to call the name of this file? And it's, again, using the assembly name. This could be vaulted if we want. And what it's doing is generating an Excel file and a CSV file that we then can look at. It's asking you, do you want to open it? And I'll say yes. So the first thing you're going to see is I'm in Excel. And it doesn't have to be the latest version of Excel. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see different tabs. This is fully customizable to your particular needs. And because we're looking at the door, you'll see that the assembly we're looking at is mission door left. That's the assembly. And within the assembly, you can see mission door vertical. Are any of the edges edge banded? No, they're not. That's why there's an X here. It's made out of solid materials, corded oak vertical right, bottom horizontal, top horizontal, glass, says what it's made out of, shoe mold, <clears throat> it's telling you exactly the size. So it's listing this, and this is just one way of looking at it, okay? Now notice there's no such thing as purchase parts here. There are no purchase parts because it is, there's no hardware. If I went to purchase parts, it would be blank. If I'm going to a panel saw, I wouldn't be going to a panel saw, so it would be blank. But it's saying that if you're going out to, to optimize a glass cutter, let's say you're doing a water jet, or you have a way of optimizing glass, okay, it's saying to you that this size for the glass alone can be sent directly to optimizers automatically. Hardwood's not being optimized, so that's why it doesn't appear here. If I went to an indented bill, the indented bill is going to list the mission door left with all the parts in it, quantity of parts, what they're made out of. If we go further, you could see here that here are items that are solids. Here are items that are boards, glass. It's usually made to cut from larger materials. And here's the molding. And it's also saying that the molding, there's 56 inches of molding being used. And the, the actual sizes of each piece is here. So it's listing all of this for you. Now, this is just one configuration of the way you can send stuff out to a spreadsheet. And there's literally, the more you know about setting up spreadsheets, you, people have done wonderful things with this. But it gets a little bit better. As I go further on the tabs at the bottom, you could see that it's listing mission door, vertical left, right, bottom, horizontal. And when I click on this, it's listing each of the parts, as you can see it here, each of the parts are, are listed here and guess what there's a bar there's a QR code and you can take your iPhone hold it up here and that QR code could could be where the files located it could be wh what program in the cam program it's going to or it could be any other piece of information that you need to wand when you, at, at the shop floor it also drew you a picture of that particular part it also showed you where that part is located, in what folder. 
It told you what the material was and gave you a picture of it. And if I was going out to a CNC program, it would list the program here. And it did with each part. This is the second one. Showed you a picture of it. So what it's doing is giving you all this information. And this is just some of the information because I can, with the system, you can program anything easily. You don't have to be a visual basic person, you know, C++ person. This is a normal inventor person doing this. What output do you want? This is consistent. It's Excel. Anybody can read it. This could be saved to a PDF or it could be put, published somewhere or it could put in, be put in the vault. Okay, let's go further. Let's go all the way back to here. And I'm going to take the caucus this time, okay? I'm not doing it all at once. Now think about the caucus. What did we do here? It's made out of it's made out of some sort of core material with a covering. A core and a covering, right? This is called a laminated board. And it has edge banding. Some some of these items are edge banded on four sides, some of it's edge banded on two sides. How do you tell the shop? which sides are edge banded. How do you tell the shop what grain direction? This means lots and lots of information that you have to put in a 2D document. We don't have to. Let me show you why. And this might go out to a panel saw first. We have plenty of clients that have that go out to a panel saw first, then they edge band it, and then they route it if necessary. A lot of square cuts, they don't have to do it. They go out to cut right, they go to artists, they go out to other um, optimization tools. And you saw that we couldn't do that with solids, but we can do it with laminated boards. So if I went to a bill of material here, this is the carcass. I'll go out to Excel with it. And the speed that you see here is real, okay? So it's taking under 10 seconds to pull all this information out of the system. <clears throat> I'll say yes. So here is the caucus. This is the top level assembly. And you could see here, it's a laminated board with a corded oak covering. The vertical panel, oh look at that. The front edge has corded oak edge banding on it. The caucus bottom panel, right, the very bottom panel, just the front had edge banding on it. You're seeing what's here, each of the parts. Now they're just laid out this way because this is the way I, I've done it. But let's take a look at, here's the middle shelf. Here's all the edge banding on the middle shelf, all the edges. And if one edge was a different edge banded than another or a different thickness, it would list it. So the front edge might be three mil and the sides might be, you know, one mil. Okay, going to a panel saw. It's now going to a panel saw and it's listing everything it needs for a panel saw. That means if you go out to Cutrite or Audis, those are the most used panel saw software out there today, it's already providing a CSV file with all the information in it that will automatically send to that machine to optimize the panel. With, of course, the edges, which edges have edge banding on it. And it's already compensated for the thickness of the edge banding. What's also a little more interesting as I go further, okay, again, listing everything. And then each of the parts, this is the right panel. It actually drew the part. Okay, let's go for, let's go to the caucus bottom, okay. Notice this is the caucus bottom. It is showing you the edge banding on this face of it, right here. This is this edge here showing you the edge banding. So now with this, you have the ability to not even have a drawing, 
the operator on the shop floor or the assembler can see that that side gets edge banded. If we go further and look at this, it is saying that these items, the caucus top panel, has an interior uh, that's a laminated board, high density flake board core with a corded oak covering. So it's listing each one of these, okay? As we go further, let's take a look at middle shelf. Here are the four pieces of edge banding. Here are the four pieces of edge banding. It's labeled it right here. So they know, and the grain direction. Showing you the grain direction, and I could have it colorized if I want. So this is done. Okay, let's go further with this. So this time, I want the whole thing. So I said bill of material. Now it's going to list all the pieces. And I'll go to Excel. So this is going to take, you know, a couple seconds longer because it's processing through um, 88 separate parts and the assembly. So instead of 8 seconds, it might be 12 seconds. This is being processed at this individual computer. I'm, I'm working on a laptop at the moment. I'll pick yes. And now, it is saying this is the mission cabinet. This is the entire cabinet, top level. And within the top level cabinet, this is the caucus. And the caucus has these parts. And as we go further, past the caucus, then it's going to come back with the door left. This is a subassembly door left, and these are the parts that are in door left. This is door right. And these are the parts within door right. And this is the drawer assembly and the parts that are in the drawer assembly. And we have a butt hinge that's an assembly, so it appeared here. But let's go to purchase parts. Now purchase parts, because I, we didn't see them before because we didn't have the total assembly, we only had the individual subs, now appear. Here is the pull, three of those two of these, dowels, and four hinges, done. Going to a panel saw. Now, if there are, if there are panels that come out of a sheet stock, here's the glass now that's coming out of it. The indented bill is showing you a little bit differently. So these configurations that you see on each tab can be set up the way you want for whatever departments that you want to send this to. Who needs to see your data? That's what I said the entire team needs to see your data, but it can be organized in a way that when, um, when estimating sees it, they see it in this format. When shop floor sees it, they see it in that format, but what we're doing is correlating all the data that comes directly out of Inventor. That way, no mistake. Well, let's put it this way. Yes, you still can make a mistake, but the mistake follows from engineering. So engineering is now driving this world. So we are focused now, let's call it engineering focus, not sales focus. You're getting exactly the way they built it. Um, and as you go further here, these are the individual parts. Every single, every single thing, every single part here, you can go further to get information from it. And a QR code or barcode that people don't even have to look things up. They can wand it. It can go right to the file they want if that makes the most sense to you. So, wanted to show you this because this is where we have seen in incredible dramatic changes in the way companies can work. Within a couple of minutes, we've accumulated quite a lot of digital data from 
the utilization of the tools I've shown you. But I believe there's still more. Uh, where else can we take advantage of that, the, the tool set that, that we have? And we've seen many of our customers take advantage of it in the drawing mode, in 2D documentation, in the AutoCAD DWG, Inventor DWG formats, in the IDW formats, because they need to still pass data on paper, or maybe PDF or DWF or 3D PDF. So, so I'd like to just show you some of that. Um, I'll open up the door because I'm going to create it some detail of, with the door open, okay? I want some detail of this back area because we've got the molding here and a couple of pieces. And what I'll, I'll go ahead and say I want to create a brand new uh, drawing. And I'm using my templates, okay? These are templates that we've generated over time that is customized to our particular needs. Uh, what I like working on, my preference. But again, these are templates that should be already in your system or at least at least you're considering standardizing if you haven't already uh, of course these title block the title blocks will fill out automatically based on other things that we do again we want to go to the extreme to save as much time as we can on the uh, on that the mundane tasks that we're asked to do over and over and over again I want to minimize as much of that as possible and standardize it across everybody who's using the system per company so I'm going to create a base view okay, of this guy. Let's put him over. Let's put him over here. Okay. And we'll shade it and we'll call this full view. And we'll pick OK. We'll now do a detail of this area in here. And we'll bump this up a little bit. Okay. Let's just move it around just a bit. There we go. Or we'll move this up, you know, just like that. That's good. Okay. And we'll make sure that we turn the label on. And labels on here, okay? I'll now create a parts list. So I'm going to annotate parts list of this view. And I'll make sure it's a structured legacy parts list. I'll pick OK. And I'll place it up here. Okay, so what you're seeing here is top level information, okay? Top level information that is, of course, uh, of the assemblies. But I want to see information about the door as well as this at the same time. So if I double click on the menu, or I shouldn't say the menu, on the bill of material, I can find mission door left, hit the plus sign, and this now becomes available. And let's just make this a little smaller so we're not encroaching on it, okay? There we go. And now, if, when I balloon something, let's balloon this shoe. That's 1.8, which of course is here. And let's take all of these, right click and align them horizontally. If you want, of course. Okay, so now what you're seeing is that this is now an indented bill. That's what you have. Now, I don't particularly want just the number I also want the material. So what I could say is I want to see a different type of balloon. Okay. 
And what I'm just doing here is changing the balloon style so that if it's not the default, of course I can make it the default. I'll take the glass here and just move it like so, okay? And save my work. So let's just pick save. So again, what's happening here is that we're reusing the data. Any data that went out to the bill of material to the Excel spreadsheet can of course be populated here. So I hope you can see the benefit of what I've shown you up to this point. But there's one more piece of the puzzle, and that is change. And we know that in woodworking, there's always change. Whether the customer changed their mind, whether the architect changed their mind, whether we can't get the right materials, or the right hardware, whatever, there's change, and we have to be able to change. So in this particular situation, let's say that the materials used are wrong, can't get them or the customer wants green rather than red, or what have you. What do you do when the whole job is complete, like it is here? How do you edit this so that you spend seconds rather than hours? Because it usually happens on Friday afternoon at 4.30, someone comes to you and say, you need to change it, and you wanna go home, but you're not gonna go home for the next two, three hours. I want the ability to change immediately, absolutely immediately, and move on. So let me show you how a possible scenario can work for you. So in something like this, okay, let's say the customer said, Steve, change the outside material to something else, to one of our other materials. B, change the hardwood to something else. Change the molding to something else. Change the edge banding to something else. Any number of different possibilities. So, one of the benefits we see in Inventor with woodworking is the ability to what is called replace, either hardware replace or material replace. It's a very simple task. So if I went to the bomb, there'll be two buttons in the bill of material, hardware and material. I'll go to material. So here are the different things, or the different assignments we gave the system. We said solids. What were solids? Solids were the doors and the drawers. Boards was the glass. Laminated boards were the quartered oak on, on MDF. And the molding was quartered oak and the edge banding was quartered oak. So in other words, you're seeing everything that's been assigned. And you can also see on laminated boards what was a quarter inch board, what was a three quarter inch board. So this is really listing, it's really, gran it's really granular. It, it's really building all the way down to every piece. Okay, so saying that, what I'm gonna do, I said we wanted to change the doors. So I can go into solids, and here is, this is the door. You can see it's quartered oak. Well, I wanted something different. So if I click on this button, it opens a spreadsheet up. A spreadsheet. A documented spreadsheet. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And I could say that that should have been not what it is, but it should have been this red oak. Okay, and you can see it just changed. It just changed it here. It changed the name to S Solid Red Oak. It's this color, and again, color and texture, anything you want. And the vendor is Northeast. Okay, and I'll say Apply Appearance Image and Replace. So what it's now doing is it's going into the model. I haven't touched the model. It's going into the model, replacing it, replacing all the occurrence of it, and everything's updating. Let's see what it looks like. There. Completely changed, right? The molding didn't change here because 
that is molding, not solid, okay? Then when I go into the bill of material, well, let's go into the drawing, okay? Look, changed right here. And color changed. And when I go to the bill of material, and go out to Excel with it, the report changed. So what it did now is it automatically altered everything by one pick. But you could have said the door, the three quarter inch members of the door are the only thing I want changed, or the half inch members of the door. Or you can open up an old job, go in and just replace a couple things like I just did and send it all out again and it's done. So I'm going into Excel so that you can see that the door, let's go find the door. Here it is, solid red oak. That's what I changed it to. That's done. Let's come out of this again one more time. Okay and go into again let's say i just wanted to change the molding okay so we can go into materials i can find the molding that molding you could see is on all these shoes but i can change i could just change one of them or i can come up here and change all of them well i'll use this color it's VQHN natural ash quarter cut molding. Double click on it, right? And apply. And pick OK. Let's look at this and see what we're doing. Changed. Go into the drawing. Changed. Now, the capability here is dramatic, which means you can put hardware in the same way. Same way, you can use generic hardware starting out, okay, and then replace it. So in the bill of material now, let's say you use a generic European hinge. You're not sure which one you want. You're not sure what's available. But at the end of the job, you can go to hardware default and you could see here that these are the items and you can replace them with different ones from your own system. Now, how are we doing this? Because I didn't do anything in Inventor other than call up a spreadsheet. So what I'd like to do is show you what that looks like. So bear with me, I'm gonna to go to my directory Replacement data, materials, okay? And if we take a look at some of the materials that I'm using, okay, this is nothing more than a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. Appearance code, appearance name. And then if I want to point to a bitmap somewhere, where is it? So now, Think about this. Let's say you, you're, you're doing mica, all kinds of formica. You know how many different options there are. There are thousands and the different companies. Well, guess what? Everybody's got a spreadsheet like this. So that now you can use a generic color code and at the end of the job, pull up the spreadsheet and say replace it. Nothing has to be done inside of Inventor itself. So I don't have to populate Inventor with 150, 200, 500 different materials for any of these items, I can just say replace. And that works quite well, because if you think about a job, think about any of your jobs, how many different materials are there in one job? Five, six, there's not 50. And then this works out real well. So um, material replacement and hardware replacement is an absolutely wonderful tool. And what I'm doing here, we've seen people save literally 40 to 60% of their time and easily trained and standardizing the entire department. I would like to thank everyone for attending our session this afternoon. 
I hope it was meaningful. I hope you were able to take something away that you might be able to utilize within your department. Uh, if we can help in any way, uh, please don't hesitate. Give us a call, email us, text us. We're here to assist. Um, this is the third in our session of seminars. We were planning to have more, but because of the pandemic and everybody's all over the world today, uh, at home, not at home, uh, it just really messed everybody up. So um, we're still planning on a, f a couple more before the end of the year. And if anyone has any suggestions on areas that are interesting, that are meaningful to you, that really have been hurdles that have slowed down your progress, please let us know. I'd love to hear from you because if you're having a problem, probably others are also. So again, uh, please get back to us if, if that is the case. If you have any suggestions, we're always open to that kind of uh, that conversation. Um, I put up on the screen again, um, location for downloading. So if you don't have uh, inventor at the moment you can download it for free for 30 days if you don't have woodworking for inventor 11 you can download it for 45 days any problem in in getting the downloads again please let us know so again thank you for your time have a great weekend and uh, we'll keep everybody informed on when the next one usually it'll probably be towards the end of the summer again thank you